Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Deganji reporting for The Media Speaks. It's time once again for the massive Fukushima update. It's November 2013. Hey, I don't do this very often, but I need you to do me a favor. I never remember to tell anybody to subscribe to my own channel, but I kind of need you to. It's how I grow, so hit subscribe. I do at least one uh, massive Fukushima update each and every month. There are people in Japan that wait for me to do this because a lot of their news is banned, so make sure it gets to them in areas that it might be for some reason. For parts of it uh, that are not a band, of course, uh, this matters to you as well, and uh, let's face it, it matters to the whole world, it matters to the United States. Because the United States, under President Obama, is not testing the food supply. He's not testing it. That means whatever radioactive fish that you might be eating, or that your family might be eating, they're going to be served on a dinner plate without ever being checked. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the Fukushima update. Again, friends, please do make sure that you subscribe. It is very, very important to me. All right, uh, Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com. Three disturbing Fukushima facts the government is covering up. Uh, ancient Anthony Gucciardi, of course, uh, a hero, an absolute hero to uh, lovers of liberty. Uh, we all know, know what he did with Snowden, so let's go ahead and give him the uh, hat tip and respect that he deserves. Uh, one, the Fukushima radiation readings continue to hit a new high. One of the most absurd lies put forth by TEPCO, Fukushima plant operator Tokyo Electric Power, which again is General Electric. Why does that matter? When you go to the store, don't buy General Electric because they own TEPCO and they created the worst meltdown in all of recorded history. If you're in a mutual fund and General Electric is in it, pull your money out, put it elsewhere, quit being part of the problem. By TEPCO and backed by the government is the notion that Fukushima is really nothing to worry about. In fact, the incident was classified as a level one anomaly before it was revealed that radiation levels were skyrocketing to new highs. And this was as recently as September 4th, 2013, it says. It has this same revelation that last September that forced the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, the NRA, to acknowledge this reality and change the classification of Fukushima from a level three uh, serious incident, which again, uh, on the on the scope of importance, this is the worst nuclear disaster in history, except for maybe the creation of the planet itself, which wasn't necessarily a disaster. It did create Diane Feinstein, but hey, it also created us decent people too. Um, the radiation levels were high enough to kill an unprotected human within hours. This is important. Why? Because it's getting in your food. It's drifting over here. Are you taking uh, 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day like I tell you to do? That would be drinking vitamin water instead of poison ass pop, and that would be taking uh, two emergency a day. One in the morning, one at night. Are you doing that? Are you taking echinacea? Are you taking calcium, like Chris Busby said, so that you're building up your bones against strontium? So it can't. Uh, strontium is a uh, calcium mimicker, and if you, if you're not protected for it, it's going to go right into your bones. Are you doing that? Are you you hearing this and knowing this bad and thinking that there isn't anything that you can do? Two plant operators caught faking radiation readings. I just gave you two things that you can do. Quit funding General Electric, and I told you what to take to help combat some, but not all of this. Plan operators cut faking radiation readings, the very core of the Fukushima disaster timeline, and that has been regurgitated by the mainstream media and government agencies alike, was almost exclusively based on information provided by plant operator TEPCO, a company that is now on record as having lied to the population of the world in a major way. There are no signs, it says, that they would ever tell the truth unless forced to. It wasn't until an independent investigation revealed that the actual levels of radiation released from the plant, which is around two and a half times more than TEPCO would even admit, that TEPCO was forced to go on record and state that the radiation levels they released were indeed much lower than reality. 
we can only imagine what else they are lying about. There are a couple things in there that you can't miss. Two and a half times more is, is the difference between life and death. If you tell somebody that something is 100 millisieverts an hour, and for those of you new to that, that is a harmful but not extremely harmful level. And then you tell them that it's really 300, uh, 250 millisieverts an hour, now you've created a, a rather substantial health risk for the person. That's what they lied about. Now we're not talking about 100 millisieverts. We're talking about, they gave us numbers that were deadly, and now we find out that the numbers are two and a half times as deadly. Use the analogy I gave you, but use it on a massive scale. The other thing that is important to uh, talk about here is that they, they, they had meters that, let's say, um, it, I'm going to have to put this in layman's terms. Let's say there's numbers 1 through 10, and you have a meter. Well, that meter can only go as high as 3. And you hold that meter up to test the radiation, and it reads as 3. You write down 3. People see it and think, all right, it's safe to be around these leaking containers because there's a three. You get new meters and you find out it registers a nine and a half. Well, you write down nine and a half and you say, hey, I'm sorry, we just bought new meters. Come on. You know, and it's, it's a dumbed down analogy, but it's what they did with the, with the, uh, with the uh, leaking uh, water containers over there. That's what they did. They, they, they brought in meters that they knew only read up to a certain amount and wrote the max out as what the max out in reality was, knowing that there were meters there. They could have written down, at the very least, we don't have the meters on hand, which many argue was on purpose, but they didn't. They lied about it on purpose. You can't tell me that you have that many people at TEPCO that don't know what was going on there. And well, the meters only went so high. They knew. Come on. How many of you work in any field where you meter anything? You know. You know how to measure your own things. And they knew what they were doing. They knew when it peaked out that it was more than they could take. It's like when you floor a car. You know when you've buried the needle, but you're actually going faster than it says it was. That is exactly what happened here. Um, the third thing, uh, Mr. Gucci already writes about three radioactive cesium, a 137 was mostly drained into the Pacific Ocean, and that would be the ocean on California, for you Russia fans. The independent investigation into Fukushima radiation levels not only exposed the lies by TEPCO regarding the radiation explosion at the plant, but that around 78% of the cesium-137 released by the plant was funneling into the Pacific Ocean. Think about that the next time you go to a Chinese buffet. Think about that the next time you are eating tuna, bluefin tuna, look up how radioactive it's been. If that makes you angry, then it's time to get angry because you can't enjoy your seafood anymore. Am I clear enough? If you're living on the west coast of the country, it's going to become more and more of a death sentence. You're shortening your life and your family's life. Get out of all of Hawaii. Does that make you mad? That's what GE did to us. That's the good things they brought to life. I'm not saying it because I'm a nutcase. I'm saying if you stay in California and you're hearing my words right now and you are on the West Coast, then what you are doing is leading to your own demise and the person to be angry at is TEPCO, not me. The plant now states that the three reactor meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiichi plant released about 900,000 terabecquerels of radioactive substances. Terabecquerels. 900,000 terabecquerels. That is 100,000 terabecquerels. Also, each becquerel is one nuclear explosion on a microscopic level that happens in your body. Each explosion has a likelihood of damaging the cell, which can do a number of things to the heart, cancer, thyroid, brain, lung, kidney. One reaction is one becquerel inside the body. 900,000 tera becquerels reactions per second that could hurt your body of radioactive substances. Now that I've explained that. 
About 20% fell on Japanese land, 2% somewhere on land outside the country, and a whopping 78% remainder is believed to have entered into the Pacific Ocean. Don't eat seafood. Don't eat anything. If you have wine from California, pour it down the drain. Does it cost a lot of money? Probably pour it down the drains. You want to know what costs more money? Cancer treatment! Get rid of it! Don't eat raisins from the West Coast unless you're trying to get cancer. Can I be more clear? Meanwhile, fisheries continue to operate and governments continue to pretend that nothing has gone wrong. At the same time, writes Gucciardi, the mainstream media, the dying media that continues to lose trust ratings according to major Gallup polls, pushes the propaganda that Fukushima is nothing at all to worry about. Just keep eating seafood from Japan and don't mind the fact that radiation levels are still spiking. And definitely don't mind the EPA raising the acceptable limits of radiation in your food supply. In other words, the FDA, which Ron Paul wisely said that we should get rid of, because they do things like this. The FDA raised the limits you're allowed to have in your food rather than bar barring the food. Why? The dollar. The same reason GE was allowed to do this under the name TEPCO. The answer is clear, he writes, exposing this information and indicating and, and inciting a reality check throughout the planet is essential to actually forcing the establishment to respond to Fukushima. Unfortunately, it once again appears that we are required to offend for ourselves <coughs> on a survival level until we can reach the point where the public has truly had enough. Um, wise words, Mr. Gucciardi. Wise words. Wise words. Um, this is from RT. Six Fukushima workers exposed to radiation after pipe incident. And one of the things that make this even more frustrating is that TEPCO and Japan have been pushing off international help for as long as possible. Yeah, they're him hawing and hinting that they might do so now, but they have deliberately hid a lot, and it's going to cost the, the, the lives and health quality of untold numbers of people. They should have had other people in here since day one. Even Russia had enough sense to do that. Um, RT, October 8th. Uh, six work people working at the site of crippled Fukushima power plant have been exposed to radiation after one of them mistakenly removed a pipe connected to a contaminated water treatment system. It's the second incident at Fukushima in three days. Um, and yet they claim they don't need any outside help. And yet we're supposed to believe that they can move the fuel rods out of Unit 4 without any of them touching each other which, again, look up what Helen Caldicott said about that. Um, it could set off a nuclear explosion of untold uh, magnitude. Um, we're supposed to believe these people that have workers there that don't even know which pipe to take off are going to be the ones that could take the entire health of the northern hemisphere of the planet into their hands? It's this, the accidental pipe detachment on Wednesday resulted in the leak of several tons of water, which Fukushima operator TEPCO uses to cool the reactors. The water came from a system which removes salts from the cooling liquid after it comes out from the damaged reactor. The leakage continued for some 50 minutes. Reuters estimates that at least 7 tons of water escaped from the system. These are the people that your health depends on. You listening to this. These geniuses. Let's build a nuclear power plant on the shore of a country that uh, gets a tsunami. The water came from the... Uh, I'm sorry. The Nuclear Regulation Authority told the news agency that the incident was equivalent to a level zero on the international nuclear and radiological event scale, but did not give an official rating. No, I bet he didn't. TEPCO would not immediately report on the conditions of the six workers exposed to the water following the incident. No, and I bet they won't tell you how they're doing five years from now when they have glowing tumors coming out of their necks. This is a disaster. You won't read about that. You won't read about what happens to their kids from the genetic damage. You won't read about any of it. TEPCO would not immediately report. Earlier this week, a worker accidentally switched off a water pump used to channel water into the reactor building. 
Leakages of contaminated water have been plaguing Fukushima in the latest months as TEPCO fails to prevent radiation from being leaked into the environment. It says on Sunday, Japanese Minister, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe admitted that his country needs a foreign knowledge and expertise to deal with Fukushima. Yeah, after you're done hiding everything. This has been all the proof that the world has ever needed to know that uh, Silk, uh, Karen Silkwood was a hero. Maybe not the best parent that ever lived, but a hero. And if you don't know who she is, look her up. They kill her. Uh, HuffingtonPost.ca David Suzuki's Fukushima warning is dire and scary. Now, InfoWars has been reporting that you will have to evacuate the United States if Unit 4 falls over, which is what Helen Caldicott has alluded to. However, what this gentleman said is that you are going to have to evacuate the west coast of the United States. Now, technically, what InfoWars reported was completely correct, because the west coast of the United States is, in fact, the United States. But this gentleman here is not saying that you would have to evacuate all of the United States. And maybe it's on accident, but that's the way that InfoWars sort of reported it. And I love InfoWars, Alex Jones, I love you. But uh, in this instance, I wanted to be even more clear that this gentleman is saying the west coast of the United States, if four was to fall. Now, other scientists, such as Helen Caldicott, has said that you would want to evacuate the entire northern hemisphere. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm on the side of Helen Caldicott here, but what I'm saying is that's not what David Suzuki reported. And I'm, I'm drawing the line of differentiation here because a lot of you that listen to the correct views for the Fukushima updates, I give you the most precise. Um, David Suzuki has issued a scary warning about Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant, saying that if it falls in a future earthquake, it's bye-bye Japan and the entire west coast of North America should be evacuated. And that means uh, they won't evacuate it, they'll tell you that everything is fine and surf the radioactive tsunami. The nature of things, host made the comments in a talk posted to YouTube after he joined Dave, Dr. David Schindler for letting in the light, a symposium on water ecology at the University of Alberta, October 30th and 31st. An, ex, an excerpt of the talk shows Suzuki outlining a frightening scenario that would result from the destruction of the nuclear power plant. Again, four, the reactor four. The way, they're, the way everyone's reporting this, I'm, I'm glad you're listening, they're, they're, they're all chopping up what he said here. Fukushima is the most terrifying situation I can imagine, he said. Three out of the four plants were destroyed in the earthquake and in the tsunami. The fourth one has been so badly damaged that the fear is if there's another earthquake of the seven or above that, that the building will go and then all hell breaks loose. And the probability of a seven or above earthquake in the next three years is over 95%. That's important because it can take up to 15 to 20 years or longer to, to, to stop this, to get everything under control to at least to the point 20 years where you wouldn't have to worry necessarily about an earthquake. That, that's the soonest, is about 20 years. So 95% chance that you will have an earthquake that will knock that down within the next three years, and for those of you Lady Gaga fans, three is less than 20. Suzuki said that an international team of experts needs to go into Fukushima plant and help fix the problem, but said that the Japanese government has too much pride to admit that. Yeah, they would like to see us all die just for their pride. Uh, remember World War II. I have seen a paper which says that if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under in an earthquake, that those rods are exposed, it's bye-bye Japan, and everybody on the west coast of North America should eva evacuate, he said. Is, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. Suzuki's warning, it says, came as radiation from the Fukushima plant has been detected in North Alaska and along the West Coast, as CBS News reported. And again, any, everything's always uh, uh, well reported on before the mainstream media gets it. So when CBS is talking about it, you know it's much worse than what they're saying. Because them putting a happy face on it is where their advertising dollars come from. Radiation in Alaskan waters could reach Cold War level. The Cold War levels, said Douglas Dasher. For those of you who don't know, it could be as bad as the nuclear bomb testing during the uh, nuclear Cold War that America had, and that resulted uh, in our bomb testing being so severe 
that the entire cast of The Conqueror died of cancer or some related to heart illness, uh, all linked to radiation. And it's John Wayne's last movie, so it's not like I'm making this up as I go. It's pretty easy to look up. Although John Kelly, a professor Etermis at the same university, doesn't seem as certain that it will reach dangerous as levels for humans. Well, we get to all find out, don't we? Because we all live in the wonderful world where they just lie about all things nuclear. And again, I trust Helen Caldicott a lot more than CBS News. And nuclear. Yeah, politically not so much. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. Please do so in that order. Because when you do, you will not only get amazing merchandise, but you'll be helping The Media Speaks. We have Christmas. It is right around the corner. Do you know anybody? It's just listed under cool stuff. Novelty gifts. Why don't we go there? We'll go there. The Czech M10 M gas mask with filter and drinking tube, $24.99. Um, the expendable Kunai three-piece throwing knife set, $29.99. Cool, awesome stuff. Um, Black Powder Outlaw Revolver Replica with Stand, $24.99. The Black Savage Grilly Suit, five-piece woodland camo, $69.99. You could, you could hide in broad daylight in the woods and nobody would ever find you. Uh, how about anybody into fantasy? Do you have anybody in your life that likes, like Lord of the Rings or any, any of that kind of fantasy uh, gift idea thing? God of War Kratos, Blade of the Chaos, Bud K, $129.99. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Maybe you don't have that much money. Well, go, go to TheMediaSpeaks, click on, click on Bud K, and then click on the $5 wallet savers. I normally do that on my show. I did something different today. But they've got a whole bunch of gifts that are awesome. They've got knives. They've got uh, those ninja spikes you throw behind you, and no matter how they land, they point up, and nobody can chase you because of a flat tire or holes in their feet. Uh, they have that. $5 or less at Bud K. Guys, PrisonPlanet.com, i got three more stories I want to get to. Reminder, Fukushima radiation levels are 95% higher than reported. TEPCO admits uh, Prison Planet Elizabeth Rentor writes. Since the earthquake, tsunami, and subsequent, nu subsequent nuclear meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan, we've been sold a bill of health. Sure, Japanese officials couldn't tell us the catastrophe wouldn't have any effects, but they could exaggerate the potential dangers. And with each passing month, it, month, it seems we are learning just how much they work to cover the true extent of this ongoing disaster. The latest and frightening discovery is that TEPCO, the power company and corporate juggernaut behind Fukushima, has continually underreported just how much radiation is leaking from the storage tanks. Contain, containing highly radioactive water, excuse me. And they didn't just fudge a few numbers or soften the scare factor by reassuring people with careful language. They downright lied. And they did it deliberately. It goes on, and I will too. On September 4th, it was revealed to the world that radiation leakage was at a new high in the doomed plant, and that the water tanks were leaking as much as 2,200 millisieverts. Uh, look it up, it's a measurement of radiation. Just a few days prior, they shook the world by admitting leaks were measured at 1,800 millisieverts. This marked a dramatic increase in only a few days' time, but it was nothing compared to the initial increase. For many months, TEPCO told the world the tanks were only leaking 100 millisieverts, downplaying the level by nearly 95%. So how did the company, and I mentioned this, go from reporting leaks of 100 millisieverts to 1,800 millisieverts, and then 2,200 millisieverts in just a matter of weeks? They bought a new radiation. They bought new radiation meters. As asinine as it sounds, it said TEPCO was using meters that maxed out at 100 millisieverts. So rather than changing their measurement mythology or buying new equipment, they would just report that the radiation leaks were 100 MSV. I'm going to keep going on so that you completely understand why this matters. As Mike Adams at Natural News reports, this is like branding a TEPCO weight loss scale that maxes out at 110 pounds. 
It doesn't matter if you what you really weigh, because whenever you step on the TEPCO scale, you'll top out at 110 pounds, a diet success. Hardly. TEPCO wasn't only lying to the world, they were lying to those closest to the disaster. Residents and cleanup workers. Workers, those who had been in the facility under the assumption that radiation levels were at 110 millisieverts are likely dead. This is not an exaggeration. Radiation levels of either 1,800 MSV and certainly 2,200 MSV prove fatal after exposure of four hours. And yet, we didn't get any reports of anyone dying from that. Oh, they just died, you know, they had cancer, they had a heart attack, right? Man, no big deal, it wasn't caused from this. Look, I just read you the science. I'm not, I just read it to you. I, I, I quoted Natural News. I quoted the studies that proved what they did and how they did it. And they're still doing it. With this admittance, we have to wonder what else TEPCO is lying about. If they didn't protect workers charged with cleaning up the corporate mess, how can we expect them to protect people in Japan and throughout the world exactly? Uh, two more stories. Uh, since I mentioned natural news, I'll stay with it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to do this in two parts. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. I'll be doing one tomorrow as well. Because like the month prior, I've gotten a lot of views. The more that you hit me, the more news I will give you. And I've had too much Fukushima to do it justice in just one night. So I will be posting tomorrow on the same topic. Um, the evidence is clear Fukushima radiation is still tearing up the west coast of USA. For those of you that think it's okay here, there has been study after study. I've been doing Fukushima reports since day one. A lot of my videos got wiped by the incompetence of the YouTube. But I've been doing this since day one and I've been following all things Fukushima since I was a child. I mean, all things radiation since I was a child. Uh, to, to, to date myself, uh, The Ultimate Sin by Ozzy, the movie Silkwood, I, I learned a lot about this stuff at an early age. Chernobyl uh, terrified me. I was like 15. Um, as cleanup crews gear themselves up to begin the treacherous task of removing 400 tons of spent fuel from the Fukushima Daiichi reactor number four in the coming weeks, Reports continue to flood in, showing that radiation from the stricken plant is still causing major environmental damage all over the world. Particularly on the west coast of the U.S., a magnitude of strange animal deaths, high radiation readings, and other recent anomalies suggest that the Fukushima disaster is far from over. It is simply ludicrous, in other words, for anyone to suggest at this point that these Fukushima woes are dwindling as fresh evidence suggests that quite the opposite is true. A recent report by Michael Snyder over at thetruthwinds.com highlights 28 signs that the U.S. West Coast is still being torn up by nuclear radiation from Fukushima. Oh, but Lady Gaga said it was fine. Many of these signs include strange illnesses and mass deaths among sea creatures and other animals, as well as high radiation readings from dozens of monitoring stations. Did, uh, did I mention you should not live in the west coast of the U.S.? Every single day, 300 tons of radioactive water from Fukushima enters the Pacific Ocean, writes Snyder about, one, about this one major sign. And it, it, don't tell me it dilutes in the ocean. Go back to last month's Fukushima massive update where I completely dispel it using science. This means that the total amount of radioactive material released from Fukushima is constantly increasing and it is steadily building up in our food chain. Again, little fish eat, uh, eaten by bigger fish, eaten by bigger fish, and each time the radiation gets stronger, that's what concentration is. Radioactive debris mass the size of California still impacting the West Coast. There is a mass of radioactive debris from the earthquake in 2011 that did not sink into the ocean and is now going to be drilling the West Coast of the country. It says another obvious sign in the recent mass migration of radioactive debris the size of California across the Pacific Ocean. BBC News in the UK reported last year that literally millions of tons of radioactive debris have begun traveling across the Pacific Ocean and that some of it had already impacted Hawaii and even in the West Coast. 
There has also been a series of strange animal deaths recently, including masses of sea lions, sockeye salmon, and other sea creatures washing up on the shore. Many of the polar bears, seas, and walruses observed along the Alaskan coastline have also been found to have major fur loss and open sores, both of which are indicative of radiation poisoning. Are you starting to see why that matters, or do you think that these animals manage to swim through different water than your untested tuna did? A different water. The radiation didn't hurt your food, right? It hurt these animals, but it didn't hurt what you're eating, right? Then we have the scientific reports that claim radioactive water will continue to impact the U.S. Uh, the West Coast for many years to come, potentially doubling in strength over the next five or six years. Plankton, bluefin tuna, and other sea life collected between Hawaii and California are already testing high for radiation, and these levels are expected to continue increasing. Again, the government isn't testing. People that are trying to save your life, scientists, are testing. Uh, look at what's going on now. They're dumping huge amounts of radioactivity into the ocean. No one expected that in 11, stated Daniel Hirsch a nuclear policy lecturer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, that he recently told the Global Security Newswire. We could have large numbers of cancer from ingestion of fish. Repeat! We could have large numbers of cancer from ingestion of fish. Do you want me to repeat it again? If you are eating fish, you are likely going to get cancer. Are you mad about that? Thank GE, they bring good things to life. Initial Fukushima radiation release more than a hundred times larger than Chernobyl uh, confirmed studies. Uh, there will most certainly be a major uptick in cancer rates due to the Fukushima incident. As the Japan Mineralogical Agency's Mineralogical Research Institute estimates that some 60 billion becquerels, and I've told you what a becquerel was, right? Let me tell you what a billion is. If you started counting now, even if you're four, and you, you count all the way to you die, one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll never reach a billion. That's how many a billion is. Forty, sixty billion becquerels of radioactive cesium and strontium are being dumped into the Pacific Ocean every day. The Tokyo Electric Power Company also admits that as much as forty trillion, with a T, becquerels, of radioactive tritium have been released into the Pacific Ocean since the disaster began. Those who still say that the Chernobyl disaster was worse than Fukushima may also want to consider the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institutional Study conducted in October of 2011 and it concluded that Fukushima had already then released up to 100 times more radiation into the environment than Chernobyl in 86. Oh, but all these people are lying, right? All these sources I gave you. I'm a nutcase, right? Today, this amount is likely astronomically higher, especially when you take into account all of the airborne radioactive plumes that have been detected billowing across the ocean and over the U.S. soil. Guys, I got one more story before I hop, here, hop off here. And again, I am doing a Fukushima update uh, tomorrow as well. So uh, join me both days. Hit share on this. It's a huge help. USA Today, I saw this today, and I want to make sure I report on it. Uh, again, it's not right on Fukushima, but it's worth mentioning because of how strong it is. It's going to dissipate by the time it gets anywhere close to Japan, but it, it's, I think it's worthy of mention. Maybe I'll be on this first. I hope it's a non-issue. Super Typhoon forecast to hit the Philippines. Well, what happens if a really bad storm was to hit Unit 4? See Story 1 in this edition. A ferocious typhoon in the western Pacific Ocean is taking aim at the fragile islands of the Philippines. Again, uh, close enough to uh, worry when you hear this. Super Typhoon Haiyan has sustained top winds of 175 miles an hour, which is equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane, according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. It is heading northwest toward the Philippines, and uh, with landfall likely early Friday local time, Thursday night in the U.S. A typhoon becomes a super typhoon when its winds reach 150 miles an hour, the Weather Channel reported. It says Haiyan is probably the most powerful storm on Earth this year, according to the meteorologist Ryan Howe of Weather Bell. 
High end should be should weaken slightly as it moves west with winds of about 155 miles an hour expected. And when it hits land, that's still very high. Uh, this could make it as strong as a Category 4 hurricane, and that's when speeds at 156 miles an hour. So, friends, it mentions rain, it mentions storm. This is really bad, and uh, again, it's it's not Fukushima, but it's close enough. I'm pretty sure somebody's glad I reported on it. Friends, share this information, warn others, warn them. Go to all my Fukushima videos. Please do so. Make sure when you're at the Media Speaks, you click on Bud K. Look at the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. I want to thank the Arcadia Grill. The story is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. The correct views is made a better place because of its delicious food. Make sure you tell Maria that Sam sent you. Go to Facebook, like them, let them know I sent you. The Arcadia Grill and Kim. Friends, thanks for listening. I mean, I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. I'm going to keep doing the same thing nonstop. It's a one-two punch, and then a one-two punch, and I'm not ending, guys. This is important, and this, this all matters. Good night, friends. God bless. See you, my live listening friends.